You can turn to Proverbs chapter 3 in the meantime. It's, it's just something that the Lord has put on my heart that I need to share with you. Um, we always talk about New Year's resolutions. Who knows about that? New Year's resolutions that you make every year before the the old year is finished and we make a lot of uh, promises, uh, decisions that we want to do in the new year. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> okay. I want to talk about, uh, speak about Proverbs and if we look at Proverbs, the theme of, themes of Proverbs, there's two themes. The first one is wisdom. And um, there can be no wisdom apart from God. We need the wisdom of the Lord. The second, the second theme of Proverbs is the practical living. How we should live to have a, a, a godly living in terms of um, how we need to, to live. And as I mentioned about New Year's resolutions is about firm decisions that we always make, either the end of the year for the new year or the beginning of the new year. You make that firm decisions. What you're going to do or you make the decision of what you're going to refrain from, what you're not going to do. And what are the bad things that you want to cut out of your life? the bad experiences that you had in the, in the current year and what are you going to do about it in the new year. And we always, we know that this year is going to be different. We always say, you know, 2020, maybe you've made that resolutions already and say 2020 is going to be a year of change for me. I'm going to do things different. I'm going to be a better spouse, for example, that you say. I'm going to be a better father or mother to my children. You know, I'm going to read my Bible every day. I'm going to pray every day. I'm going to serve others. What is the saying? I'm going to get my ducks in a row. I'm going to get myself in order. Anybody who made resolutions for 2019? 2018, you said, 2019, I'm going to do this and that and the other. We all made that. We have good intentions to change things around for us through the help of the Lord. I was reading an article and the top five most popular resolutions that people made is in the fifth place they're going to have a new hobby fourth place is make more money third place improve relationships the second place is stop smoking can you believe it but the most popular one I wonder if you can guess what it is hey no. <laughs> the one that we all, all of us always work on after Christmas, we had our Christmas lunches, is to lose weight. <laughs> That's always the most popular one. You prepare for that Christmas lunch or the holiday period, you indulge, you eat, and then after all, you say, I must lose weight now. 2020 and that is what people are saying <clears throat> but always when you approach a new year it always gives you a, the opportunity to start afresh to better yourself and say you know this is a new year the old year I've done this and that and the other I'm gonna try and improve on those bad things that I've done I'm going to do new things, wonderful things for the new year. 
And it's so easy when we make commitments, it's so easy to forget about these commitments. And I want to encourage you, if you make a commitment, write it down and say, this is what I want to do. So that you can always keep a notebook for yourself, you know, a daily planner. Write the things in there. If the Lord speaks to you about something, write it in that book. A promise that you receive from the Lord. So that you can go back and remind yourself, this is what the Lord said for me or mentioned to me. This is what I, this is my wish for 2020. And it will always remind you to stick to that promise that you made. Try your utmost best to stick to that promise. And we will just see before we read uh, from Proverbs chapter 3, you will just see the, the, the benefits and what you can adopt from what um, he said in Proverbs chapter 3, what Solomon was saying there in that chapter, we can do for 20, uh, 2020. Let's read from verse 1, Proverbs chapter 3. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. It's, it's talking about long life. It's talking about prosperity. And if you look at this chapter, I just want to take out a few things before I go deeper into it. You will win favor and a good name. If you, if you do, if you keep the commands of the Lord in your heart, this is what you will receive. You will win favor, favor from the Lord. And if there's, there's favor from the Lord, you will win favor in whatever you do through the Lord. And a good name in the sight of God and men, meaning you will be successful. That's the good name that you will receive. He will direct your paths. He will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Your bones will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. You will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble. You will not be afraid when you lie down your sleep will be sweet. The Lord will be your confidence and keep your foot from tripping. This is so wonderful. This is just an overview of, of chapter 3. And if we start, um, I just want to emphasize these first two verses again. My son, do not forget my teaching. Keep my commandments in your heart. We must remember this and we must keep it in our hearts. For they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Proverbs chapter 4 and 5 say, Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. We as parents, we want the best for our children always. We want them to have wisdom. And we need to know that, in general, that children need to obey their parents. That is a topic on its own also. We know that there's, there's parents who neglect their responsibility. We know that. But the Word of God says, Children, you must obey your parents. We need to be obedient. Because what does it do? It 
promises long life. If we look at the fifth commandment in Exodus 20, which promises long life to those who honor their parents. It's always bad to see that children don't honor their parents. I mean, the children nowadays wants to tell their parents what to do and how to do it. I mean, really, as I said, there are parents who neglect their responsibilities. But if you look at parents who care for their kids, who provide for them, who love them, they are um, put in positions where children disrespect them. And we need to turn that around in 2020. We need to make that statement that in my house, we will respect one another. Children must respect their parents. Parents must respect their children. Because it, go, it, it goes both ways. And I want, just want to share a few points with you. Number one, and that comes from verse 3 and 4, let love and faithfulness never leave you. It says, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Can you see we have built-in tablets? We don't have to buy a tablet. It says here, write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and men. It says here, if I can take out two words here, love and faithfulness. It should be seen as, number one, it's an outward behavior, love and faithfulness. It says here, bind them around your neck. So it's an outward behavior that we need to display. Also, be true in terms of the inward life. It says, write them on your built-in tablet of your heart. We must write it in. We must remember it. When we live our lives, when we show love, when we show faithfulness, we must remember that. And it should be the everyday life that we do. It should be the foundation in which we live our lives. And this life should be centered around God. The question is, how can I know God's will in my life? And I will answer it in the next two verses. Point number two, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not, do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge the Lord in all your ways. And He will make your path straight. Or another translation say, He will direct your paths. There must be a full commitment of ourselves to the Lord. In spirit, in soul and body. We must trust the Lord for the salvation of our souls. But the next step is also important that we need also to trust Him for the direction of our lives. Sometimes we accept the Lord as our Savior and then we just go into a different direction. So it's important that we say we are saved by God's grace, God's grace, but we also walk a road with the Lord. We cannot deviate from that. It's important that we need to do that. And 
We do not always know what is best for us. Sometimes we want to do things on our own strength and we do not know what is best for us. We are not capable in guiding ourselves. And that's why Jeremiah 10 and verse 23 say, O oh Lord, I know the way of ma man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. It is not in human being, human nature, you know, to walk the steps that we want, that the Lord wants from us. And that is why we need to realize that we need the Lord every day in our lives. Everything that we do or want to do, we need to consult the Lord in it through prayer, by speaking to Him. There must be acknowledgement of the Lord, Lordship of Christ in our lives. It says, in all your ways, not some of your ways, all your ways, say all. All your ways, acknowledge Him. You know, we need to speak to the Lord on a daily basis. Because every day we have to make decisions in, and, and speak to the Lord to get the right guidance from Him. He will direct our path. And how does He do that? Is through the Word, through prayer, through advice that you get from um, godly Christians, through the Holy Spirit that speaks to us. Or it can be a combination of things, but we need to speak to the Lord every day. Amen? This, the next point is, do not be wise in your own eyes, verse 7 and 8. Do not be wise in your own eyes. I can do this thing on my own. I don't need the Lord. That is wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. We need to realize this, that we need to, the Lord. We cannot do things on our own. And 2020 is a year that is promised to be a great year. And to make this year great, we need to consult with the Lord in everything that we do. We need to acknowledge Him that He is our Heavenly Father, that we are dependent on Him. We need Him every day. We cannot do things on our own. We need Him every day. I also saw an article around, it's been estimated that fear, sorrow, envy, resentment, hate, and other emotional stresses, it contributes to 60% of our illnesses. Can you believe it? And if you cut out these things, you 60% already healthy. These are the things that, that somebody did a study on. But Proverbs 1 verse 7 said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. What is knowledge? Knowledge is understanding, you understand, and insight that you have in something. That is what the meaning of knowledge is. Next point is, honor the Lord with your wealth. Verse 9 and 10, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be full to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. We need to realize this that everything that we have belongs to the Lord. He gave it to you. 
in some or other way. Everything that we have belongs to Him. And it's important also that we need to manage these things that we receive from the Lord. Whether it's in our finances, whether it's in our relationships, uh, in the home or with other people, we need to manage this. Because um, that is so critical for us that we need to do this. And it's important that we need to bring what the Lord has blessed us with. Now we're talking about the tithes that we always collect on the Sunday. We need to bring something to the Lord that He blessed us with. And we must realize that we cannot outgive the Lord. That is important. We need to sow. Because in order to reap something, you need to sow. You cannot ask the Lord to bless you, but you're not sowing. You're not sowing that seed that will bring you the, the income that you need. Next point is, do not despise the Lord's discipline. And do not resent his rebuke. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves. As a father, the son, he delights in. We need to acknowledge the Lord. And by submitting to his discipline. And many times, that when you think of discipline, you think of punishment. But that is not the case here. It's not that kind of discipline that we are thinking of. But it actually includes, um, when you think about a, a child, the proper training of a child, it includes instruction, it includes advice, it includes warning, correction, and reprimand. That does all includes the discipline that we're talking about. And we need to um, understand this. Discipline is a proof of love, not anger. That is what discipline is all about. The next point is search diligently for wisdom and find it. I'm giving you now the New Year's resolutions. So you must make note of these things from the Word of God. Verse 13 to 24, it's, I'm not going to read it now, um, but I want you to, to go a, do a study this week about Proverbs chapter 3. When you th sit down in a quiet space and you think about 2019, how was 2019 for you? And when you think about 2020, what do you see for 2020? And it's important that we need to, um, verse um, 13 to 24, as I say, I'm not going to read it, but it's talking about wisdom. Wisdom has two categories, is information and know-how. When you think of a farmer, I just want to give you an example of information and know-how. When you think of a farmer, a farmer must have the right equipment and materials to be able to be a successful farmer. That is the information that he must have. The know-how is what to do and what not to do when you farm. How to use the equipment and how not to use it because where to use it and also where not to use it and the characteristics about this wisdom is uh, when you look at verse 13 to 20 it's talking about knowledge it's talking about learning information intelligence data facts intellect and experience and verse 21 to 24 
This characteristics of wisdom is talking about perception, discernment, judgment, reason, insight, carefulness, direction, and just plain common sense. So you're going to need this information when you make decisions for the new year, what you want to do. And the next point is have no fear of sudden disasters, of the ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the world. Lord will be your confidence and he will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. Have no fear. Sometimes we have fear in our lives and it causes depression. It causes anxiety and the word of the Lord says, have no fear, because we can trust him in whatever we are challenged by. Next point is, do not withhold good from those who deserve it. Do not withhold good. When it is in your power to act, do not say to your neighbor, come back later, I'll give it tomorrow when you now have it with you. We see the negatives in these verses 27 to 31. Do not withhold. Do not say. Do not strive. Do not envy. Do not choose. The widest sense of things here is never Never withhold kindness or good deeds to people if you're in a position to do it. These are the things that the word of the Lord say. James 4 and 17, if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. Who is your neighbor when they talk about you? Is anybody that needs your help? That's your neighbor. What does my neighbor need? My neighbor need the good news of salvation. Second last point, do not plot harm against your neighbor. Who live trustfully near you, do not accuse a man for no reason when he has done you no harm. Sometimes we in that position or in that ways that we do things that you, we accuse people of things that they haven't done to you. Basically, don't try to pick up a fight with anybody. We, we know that they are so, they are enough conflict in this world and if we continue this to pick up fights with people that haven't done us anything you are sending my brother and my sister the last point do not envy a violent man or choose any of his ways verse 31 and 32 for the Lord does test a perverse man that takes the upright into his confidence. Sometimes I also grew up in a township. We've seen people in our townships that are progressing through illegal ways in our townships. And these people, you know, people look up to them and say, yeah, they have money. They drive the best cars. But how do they get to this wealth? They destroy people's lives through alcohol, through drugs. These are the oppressors. We shouldn't envy these people because they are destroying people's lives. John chapter 14 and 23 say, Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make a home 
with Him. This is the promises that the Lord has given us. If we obey the teaching of the Lord, He will love us. In conclusion, we have a lot to think about for 2020. And I hope you thought about things already. Whether you're working, whether you're at school, you must have thought about things already. If you're at school, you must have said to yourself, 2020, I'm going to get an average of 90% minimum in my school work. Amen? Can I get an amen from here? 90%, not less than that. Your parents are going to say, if you get average 90, they're going to say, why did you do so poor? I expected 100%. But that is what Solomon was saying. All these things that I mentioned to you in chapter 3, I know they are quite steep. But there are loads of practical application that we can apply in our New Year's resolution. And I want to encourage you, study this chapter this week. Don't just run through it, just read it with comprehension, with understanding. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you in this understanding of of the chapter. I want to wish you blessing for 2020. May your mind and your heart be closely aligned to the will of God for your life. Amen. May you know His blessings for your obedience. You are a person of great destiny. Amen. Father God, we thank you for your precious word. Thank you, Lord, that we can get from your word and part this road that you have in store for us, Lord Jesus. Father, I wish each and every person here today and those who are not here a wonderful 2020. Lord, let 2020 be a the year that brought about the change, the upliftment, the success. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love for us. Thank you for your promises through your, your word. If we stay obedient to you, we will experience your blessings every day of our lives. Congregation, let us just stand and receive now the blessing of the Lord. May the grace, mercy, peace and love from God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with you all until Jesus comes again and all God's people say, Amen. Have a wonderful